Now you can go to the multiple choice. The good thing about them is the right answer is there somewhere in the four choices. There are 20 multiple choice, so you need to read those very carefully. Cross out any that are incorrect, and I would cover up if it starts to get confusing, because often the four choices are very similar, I like to cover them up and then I think, what is the right answer before, and then I start looking. I've got one as an example for you here. This is from the 2009 exam paper. So it says a student conducted an experiment where carbon dioxide, you would highlight that, was bubbled through water, you would highlight water, and they recorded the pH, I would highlight that. I would then look at the table, you could see the pH is coming down from 7.5 to 6.8. What would be the most valid conclusion is what you would highlight. When I start reading A, B, C and D, to me they look very similar and I could easily get mixed up. So I'm going to cover them up and I would think, what do I remember about carbon dioxide? You probably did an experiment where you blew in a straw into some water, you would have measured the pH and you might remember that the pH went down because the water became more acidic. This is what happens if you stop breathing or you have a heart attack or you drown. It's not just lack of oxygen to your brain cells that's a big problem, it's also as CO2 builds up your pH is becoming more acidic, your blood, and that can also kill you as well. So you need to get rid of that CO2. So let's have a look at the choices. Change in pH is too small to be significant. Well, your normal pH of your blood is very narrow limits. 7.35 to 7.45 is normal. So even a very small change is gonna be highly significant. So not right. The water becomes less acidic. If we look at our chart here, pH has gone down, that's not true. Water has become more acidic, yes. The change in pH might not be related to CO2. That might be true, but we don't know. So the answer is C, but I'm hoping you can see, very easy to get muddled, so just cover it up and think about what you know. This here is also an excellent example of homeostasis, which is a key concept you have to know about. Stasis, static, means still, and homeo means the same. So your body tries to keep within narrow limits the same as much as possible. So that's just a few multiple choice then that we've looked at. And now we've got to the longer answer questions. So how much should you write? In the paper there are lines, but I often find those lines are not enough space. So people will say to you, you should fit it in the lines. If you've got big writing or if you ramble slightly, your lines will be gone. If you repeat the question, the experiment the student did with carbon dioxide in water was, you've used up two lines already. So you can start with just because and you can go beyond the lines. I recommend that you do that. Have a look at the verb, it's really important. I'm going to go through the verbs with you today. And of course, if it's worth eight marks, that's the maximum it would ever be in biology, then you're gonna need more detail than if it was two marks. Whether the question asks for definitions or not, I give them, and also examples, because it shows your understanding. So always put examples in. And I want you to notice in particular a plural. If, it, if there's an S on examples or impacts, it means more than one. Some other top tips to get into band six, which means over 90%, you have to make sure that you answer every part of the question. There are often multiple parts hidden, if you like. It doesn't say answer A, B, C. You have to find them. Question on disease that asks for the spread and the occurrence. So you would make little notes on the side. The spread of the disease is all about transmission. How is it passed? And if you were talking about malaria, for example, you would talk about a mosquito which can bite you and pass on 
the protozoa into your blood. The occurrence, lots of students either left this out or they didn't really know what it meant. It means who gets it. So if it was malaria, you would say uh, it's more common in Africa. It's the number one cause of death in infectious diseases in the world still today. So who gets it? If it was Alzheimer's disease you were writing about, you would say elderly people. If it was haemophilia, you'd say it's more common in males. So that's occurrence.